Hello folks, Michael Tracy here. So, the knives are out for Tulsi Gabbard. Now, I've been told in recent videos that it is Tulsi rather than Tulsi. Um, I have pers personally seen it pronounced both ways. Maybe I'll try to achieve a happy medium and say, I don't know, Tulsi? Is that okay? Either way, um, she is now the subject of some pretty vicious attacks by her detractors. And foremost among her detractors are establishment democratic hacks. Um, so Howard Dean was on MSNBC and uh, he denounced Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard, Representative Gabbard, and said that she should not be in Congress. So she called for the ouster, sorry, Howard Dean called for the ouster of Congresswoman Gabbard from Congress because she had the audacity to voice skepticism about the conclusions that have been uh, put forward about the culpability of last week's chemical weapons attack in Syria. Now, Gabbard didn't assert with any kind of certitude that she somehow knows that Assad did not commit these attacks. And we may find out that um, the pretty rash intelligence conclusion that has been rendered is accurate and that Sasad just out of seemingly out of the blue and for no obvious tactical reason decided to launch a chemical weapons attack that would he knew presumably would draw the ire of the world um, just before a uh, international symposium uh, was slated to convene that would have tried to come up with peaceable solutions to the conflict. Um, so maybe Assad is just absolutely crazy and for no tactical reason at all decided to just launch this attack on a whim because he's a murderous dictator. Um, but also there is probably reason for skepticism given the incredible failures that have been uh, that have bedeviled the U.S. intelligence apparatus and also foreign intelligence services for the past many years. Um, so now Howard Dean um, wants Tulsi Gabbard out of Congress. Remember, Howard Dean was formerly the DNC chair, and. Uh, so he exerts pretty considerable influence over the machinations of the party. And he said, quote, I am tired of people making excuses. This is no different than Trump making excuses for Putin. We've had enough of this. Let's talk about facts. And the fact is, Assad is a butcher, a murderer, and he has repeatedly over the past few years used chemical weapons on his own people. What more do you want? Dean demanded. Well, what more, I think... Tulsi Gabbard wants, and uh, what more people of a similar mindset want is firmer and more in incontrovertible proof than has been provided as to who actually is responsible for the outbreak of chemical agents in Syria that led to the gruesome deaths of many people. Um, at the very least, we should be absolutely sure about the cause of that incident before just blindly sending off Tomahawk cruise missiles to uh, commit an act of war against a sovereign state, and which could very easily escalate into a broader conflict. Um, so Tulsi Gabbard rightly, I think, said that the history of Iraq and even of Libya and of Syria up until this point proved that the intelligence services have a spotty at best track record um, and therefore extreme skepticism is warranted and yet her saying extreme skepticism was enough for Neera Tandon to run onto Twitter and to scream the following she said people love Hawaii's second district was it not enough for you that your representative met with a murderous dictator will this move you and she linked to a CNN interview a clip of a CNN interview that Tulsi Gabbard gave in which she said that, yes, she is skeptical of these findings. Anybody of with even a lick of common sense should at the very least be skeptical. They shouldn't be mindlessly just marching along to the beat of these war drums. 
um, given the utterly disastrous track record of the United States in recent history. But for some reason, for Nier Tandon, um, Tulsi Gabbard making that statement is just completely beyond the pale. So here's what Tulsi Gabbard said that Nira was the, the president of the Center for American Progress. Um, it's funny, I guess I assume that people know who Nira Tandon is because she's one of the kind of most just ridiculous Twitter villains, but at the same time, she is extremely influential and she uh, runs an, the think tank, which is essentially the stable or like the uh, the field team for who's going to be staffing the professional sort of so-called progressive movement or liberal establishment. So here's the, here's the sentence that Neera Tandon just was in, found utterly reprehensible. Quote, why should we just blindly follow this escalation of a counterproductive regime change war? Wow. How could, how dare Tulsi Gabbard make that just blatantly and utterly um, common sense utterance? Neera Tandon is just so angry that she demands that Tulsi Gabbard now be thrown out of Congress for that offense. And um, it should be said that, you know, this backlash against Tulsi Gabbard had, uh, has its origins in controversies from past months and years. Um, so after Trump was elected, Tulsi Gabbard met with him in Trump Tower and, according to her, imparted to Trump her belief that regime change was a fool's errand and that he should abide by his campaign pledges and not pursue regime change initiatives um, that are likely to give traction to extremists and jihadists and Salafists and um, Al-Qaeda fighters who are operating in Syria. Um, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard was pilloried for doing that in, when was it, November or December. And around that time, Neera Tandon accused Tulsi Gabbard of being in league with white nationalists. That's, those are the depths to which Neera Tandon, who's just a smear artist of the worst sort, sunk. She, by the most flimsy rationale, meaning some kind of somebody who's a white nationalist on Twitter tweeted favorably about something that Tulsi Gabbard had done. That meant, or we're supposed to insinuate, that Tulsi Gabbard is this tacit abetter of white nationalism and therefore she's a turncoat and should be gotten rid of. Um, and around that time, and then it, this, this definitely picked up when she went to Assad, with, uh, went to Syria with Denis Kucinich on a fact-finding mission, and over the course of that visit, met with Assad. I know it seems outrageous that people meet with foreign leaders and try to attain solutions to complex geopolitical problems, but that is otherwise known as diplomacy, and generally it's preferable to launching wars. Um, but again, that was beyond the pale for people like Nira and other Democratic operatives who were so incensed at the time that they called for her to be primaried um, in Hawaii. And even, you know, there's also, she's also engendered a whole slew of gross accusations, um, including from Ian Milheiser, who is another Center for American Progress lackey. And he had the nerve to say that Tulsi Gabbard was deemed a rising star in the Democratic Party for no reason other than that she is, quote, young and physically attractive. That's what Ian Mulheiser, this writer and Twitter agitator at the Center for American Progress, the country's leading um, so-called progressive or liberal think tank. That's what he had to say about Tulsi Gabbard. That's how he dismissed and derided her gaining a following. Apparently, People who uh, appreciated her resigning from the DNC as a vice chair in February of 2016 so she could endorse Bernie Sanders, or her being a very vocal surrogate on Bernie Sanders' behalf and trying to push him in a positive direction on foreign policy, all those people were just swindled and just uh, overtaken with um, her good looks. That's the only reason why they 
found her a compelling political figure. I mean, that truly is sexist. Um, so that is the sort of filth that liberal establishment types have been sending Tulsi Gabbard's way. And now they really are going with it full throttle. They want her ousted um, because she dares to urge caution and forbearance and um, highlights the dra dramatic failures of the kind of regime change oriented foreign policy that the, that the United States has pursued in the past number of years. Um, so that gives you a pretty good sense of where the Democratic Party is at at this moment. It's, I mean, these people are top influencers within the party. So these are just Twitter trolls um, or just guys on the street. These are people with esteem and with uh, influential platforms. So um, that be on the lookout for Tulsi Gabbard engendering further um, criticism along these disingenuous lines um, as she pretty um, in, 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 in remarkable isolation voices this critique of Trump's attack. I mean, another irony of all this is that the people like Nira and other uh, others who are um, in favor of taking military action against Assad. So Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, the whole crew of these people, I mean, they had denounced Trump as a buffoon and an incompetent and somebody who could, can't be trusted and who is taking the country off a cliff and maybe he's, he's even a fascist. Um, but yet they find Trump's rash and illegal and pretextual military action to be a sign of his good standing and it confers on him seriousness with a capital S. Um, these people also, I think, don't, I mean, but if you, if you want to go down the, the guilt by association road, why don't we associate Neera Tandon with Trump? I mean, is she a Trump, is Neera Tandon a Trump supporter now, despite relating the quote resistance with the capital R? Um, uh, probably not. That would probably be unfair. And yet, if you want to slime people by their very far-flung associations, um, then uh, that is what that logic would entail. Uh, I'll just close with this. Um, I saw a really just kind of depressing tweet from somebody who I otherwise have found to be a, you know, a very worthwhile um, political contri contributor and reporter. Um, his name is Shane Bauer. And um, he said, quote, the meeting of the alt-right and the far left when it comes to Syria's phenomenal. So he's trying to um, discredit, basically, any the, people who are against military action against the Assad government because um, they that kind of couples the extreme elements of the domestic political scene with one another. Um, so if you're on the far left and you raise objections to the wisdom or the uh, morality of attacking a sovereign country without provocation and without any real plan of action as to how it could this regime change is supposed to be effectuated, um, According to Shane Bauer of Mother Jones, um, you are in league with the alt-right. And um, he further explicated to me, quote, anyone who calls themselves anti-war that tacitly accepts a genocidal dictator is full of shit. That's what Shane Bauer says. So, I mean, this is the oldest smear in the book. Um, the idea that opposition to military action can be reasonably portrayed as tacit acceptance of a malevolent foreign leader is the smear that's trotted out every time one of these supposedly humanitarian interventions is pu pushed um, for the public. Obviously opposing a military action does not, uh, does not make it so, so that you are somehow a proponent of Assad or of Saddam Hussein or of Gaddafi or of Slobodan Milosevic, or of go down the list, right? Um, questioning the 
rightness of military action does not mean you are in league with a malevolent foreign leader. It just means very simply that you are opposed to that particular action for a host of moral, ethical, and political reasons. Um, you become a supporter of Assad when you voice support for Assad, but Tulsi Gabbard, other people like Rania Kalak, who gets this uh, accusation leveled at her all the time, never support, never voice support for Assad. What they voice support for is a rational approach to handling this conflict. Um, and r the rational approach, I think, can reasonably conclude it to not include military action. Um, but now we'll see the same old playbook um, once again trotted out, and it's pretty depressing. Um, so be on the lookout for further developments on this. Uh, send me examples that you may come across, and I'll leave it there for now. Have a wonderful night.